All right, guys, let's get started. This is just uh, some simple instructions for how to do IV drug calculations. You guys learned the basics of drug calculations in MP1, and now we add drug calculations for um, IV fluids and IV piggybacks. And so this will help you in completing the worksheet that is due the second day of the semester. So if you're going to administer IV fluids via an infusion pump and the physician did not write in the order what the rate was to be, then we need to calculate it. And when an IV solution is going to run on an IV pump, then the correct wording is mLs per hour. So what do we have to consider? We have to consider the total volume of mLs in the solution. So for instance, you guys can see here, there are a thousand mLs. <clears throat> and then how long is it to run over? And so if you had an order from a physician that said, let's infuse a thousand mLs, okay, over eight hours, what would you set the pump at to deliver this correct amount? And so this is simple, guys. You're just taking 1,000 and you're dividing it by the hours and you're getting 125. And remember, it's running on a pump, so the correct term is mLs per hour. Just a reminder about rounding. So when it doesn't come out evenly, then we round to the nearest whole. So for instance, if it's five or greater, we would round up. So if it were 167.7, we would round up to 168. And if below five, then we would round down. So we will talk about specifics for when we do not round during the semester. Next, let's say that we're going to actually have a gravity drip. We're going to infuse the fluids via gravity. We are not going to use a pump. When we are going to infuse a gravity drip, then the correct terminology is drops per minute. So it would be drops per minute. Now, you need additional information. So let's say that the order is, the physician says, let's deliver the 1,000 mLs of normal saline over 8 hours, but via gravity. Well, if it says gravity, we have to know what the drop factor is on the tubing. So where do we find the drop factor on tubing? It is on the packaging. See right here. You would take that information and then plug it into your calculation. So in this instance, the drop factor on the tubing is 10. There are two different ways to do this um, type of IV solution problem. You guys just have to figure out which way works best for you. But what I will say is pick one and stick with it all the time. So the next slide, we're going to figure out using both sample 1 and sample 2 how to deliver 1,000 mLs of normal saline over 8 hours. In sample 1, it says, let's deliver 1,000 mLs of normal saline over 8 hours. So we would have to know what that rate is. We've already calculated this. We've already done the 1,000 divided by 8 and gotten 125. Next, we have to know what is the drop factor. We found the drop factor on the packaging and know that it was 10. This was on the previous slide. Then you divide by 60 minutes, which is your constant here. So this is one way to do gravity drips. So you would take 125 times the drop factor of 10 and divide it by 60 minutes, getting an answer of 20.8, which we know we would round up, right, to 
drops per minute. The other way that you can do this is not figure out your rate, but simply plug in the total amount of fluids that you have, and in this case we said it was 1,000, right? Still your drip factor, okay? So your drip factor we found on the tube, on the packaging it was 10, over the total number of minutes that the infusion is to run. In this case it said 8 hours, so we know that 8 times 60 is 480. So what we would do now is we would take 1,000 times 10 divided by 480 and we get the same answer of 20.8 or as we know we would round up to 21 drops per minute. And so that's the two different ways that you can calculate gravity drips. Next we need to talk about intravenous piggybacks. Intravenous piggybacks are often referred to IVPBs, that's the abbreviation. So it is fluid that runs in place of the primary fluid. Uh, we usually give IV piggybacks of antibiotics and vitamins and proton pump inhibitors of various other drugs. So what you should know is that while the piggyback is infusing, the primary fluids are not infusing. Also you need to know that your, your piggyback, or secondary as it often is called, this is the piggyback, or the secondary, must hang higher than your primary IV because it runs on the principles of gravity. So it must be higher. Piggybacks are also expressed in mLs per hour because they are running on a pump. So piggybacks are expressed in mLs per hour. It's difficult to see, but we have to know the actual fluid that's in the bag, how much fluid is in the bag, and that actually says 50 mLs. Okay? So when we're going to calculate a piggyback, then it's the volume. So in this case, we said the volume was 50, right, mLs, times 60 over the delivery time. So for instance, if we look, we have a physician order that says administer cefazolin 1 gram in 50 mLs over 30 minutes. We don't even need to know what's in the bag. We just need to know that there's 50 mLs and that the physician wants us to run it over 30 minutes. And this is how you would set up an IV piggyback. And so all you have to do <clears throat> is take the 50 times the 60 and divide it by the 30 and realize that you're going to set your pump to deliver this antibiotic in the correct amount of time at 100 mLs an hour. Okay, I want you at this point to pause the explain everything and do the following drug calculations. Write down your orders and then turn the explain everything back on and you'll go to the next slide to see if you uh, were successful. And just remembering that you'll need the picture, the information saying that we have your drop factor is 60, 60 drops per ml. Okay, the answer to the first one was pretty simple. It was just uh, IV pump going to give 500 mLs over 4 hours, and so we know that that's on a pump, and so you're just taking your 500 mLs divided by your 4 hours, and your pump is going to be set at 125 mLs an hour, and we know it's on a pump because of the mLs per hour. The next one, remember, there's two different ways to do this, so sample one would look like this. Okay, I need to give a 1,000 mLs over 10 hours, and so if I have to figure out my mLs per hour first, I know that I would take a thousand divided by ten, which gives me one hundred. My drop factor on the packaging said it was sixty, and then my constant is sixty, right? My constant is sixty, so this one's pretty easy. You essentially have a hundred times sixty divided by sixty, and it gives you one hundred mLs an hour. That's sample one, or you could use, choose to do sample two. Sample two would be where you just take the entire amount of fluid that needs to be infused, a thousand, right, times the packaging information, which was 60 drops. And we have to give this over 10 hours, 
So you remember you have to convert that into minutes, so that would be 600 minutes, right? And then you divide this out. 1,000 times 60 divided by 600 gives you the same, 1,000 or 100 mLs an hour, all right? And then the last sample question said, let's give this piggyback of one gram of cefetin in 100 mLs over 30 minutes. So you would just take, oops, sorry, 100, that's your volume, mLs, times your 60, which is constant, over your 30, because that's the delivery time, right? So if you guys are taking 100 times 60, divided by 30, you realize that we need to infuse this piggyback in 200 mLs an hour. And just remember guys that if you need to get a hold of me, that you can email me this summer at peacedfodder at hccfl.edu and I do check my uh, email during the summer. And if you want, I can send you additional mass sheets. All right, thanks.